glaze over a few things. It was, uh, and sometimes you'd ask a question, and we'd sit there, and the answer didn't come. And we could, it, it felt like, we talked about it afterwards, and it, and it felt like they were flipping through some book or other. Like, which, which answer do we give up? Give, give a number five. Was, it, it felt a bit like that sometimes. So we carried on doing this, and, I, and they to, this is when they told us all about the light workers um, and how uh, many, one of the other things they said was that what they hadn't <coughs> understood and they weren't prepared for in dealing with this planet was that people who were ready to shift into fifth and higher dimensions loved people who were not ready to shift. And this meant that they, the quantum separation of the two worlds was not going to happen in, in the time frame that they had in mind on our plane. Um, that this love that we had for, for family members who were not ready um, was going to hold these two worlds together for longer. And that meant that we would experience um, savagery and paradise in the same space for a while. And that's kind of what you're starting to see now, is that begin to shape up. And that's what's confusing to us, because we, you know, we expect to see, I've got five minutes. I've got 10 minutes. I've been somewhere. <laughs> OK. So um, all right, so who was listening? Where was I? And they're OK with you. Savagery and paradise. We're not shifting as quick as they want to, because they've got loved ones and can't go. Yes, exactly. And, uh, and I sort of said, at that time, I said, you know, I'm going. And I said to my husband, you know, I'm going. You know, I'm out of here. First chance again. And, and my husband joked, because my husband is, at that time, I judged to be not quite there. You know, he's not actively seeking. He's not doing the work. He's not on the path. How is this going to work out? Because I'm going, and he obviously isn't. And uh, it's funny, I remember saying, because he doesn't say very much, he's quite a quiet guy. And I said, you do understand, don't you, that when the time comes, I am out here, I'm going. And he didn't even look up, he just said, and you'll find I'm already there. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's something that's come up with me and my clients ever since, because I get ladies who come in who say the same kind of thing. I'm doing it, he's not getting it, he won't come here with me, and he won't listen, and he won't do this. And I've realized that in actual fact, in terms of your soul contracts with, um, with your partners, the one of you has got to be the anchor. The one of you has got to keep you here in, in the third dimension and allow you to bounce off the walls while you take your spiritual path. If you were both bouncing off the walls, it would be really uncomfortable. And um, I've opened up a couple of times. Um, I've opened up a couple of times and I've looked over and there's a bright light above his head and I sort of think, and, and whenever I've sort of started to, to let myself think, you know, I don't know if it's fair to continue in this relationship because I'm dragging him places he's really not comfortable in. And then he magically comes up. He magically comes up and meets, you know, just, he doesn't have to know what's going on. Uh, he'll let me talk. He's supportive. I'll say, did you understand him? No. I said, that's all right. <laughs> but I've noticed that the way he lives, he's doing it. He's being it in his actions and the way he deals with other people and the way he behaves in his own life. I watch the changes take place in him, but he has been my anchor in this. Um, and so this is, this is what's holding the two worlds together. And, and when I sort of said, well, I'm going, and they said, well, a lot of you think you would go. A lot of you think you would go. But when the time comes, and this is the nitty gritty that they're getting to here, is we're still not, it's still not set as to how this shift is gonna happen. If Gaia will make the call, Gaia will decide whether or not she needs to shift quickly or whether it can be done slowly. And the global collective, the way we behave as a collective, will decide. If it has to go quick, then the cataclysmic events that were described in the prophecies will be on that timeline. And those things will have to come down. And in that event, light workers, they say, we are here for their rescue. We are here for the rescue of light workers. And, um, and I said, well, I'm going. And they said, well, yeah, a lot of you think you are. But when the time comes, you will start, you will be overwhelmed with um, a motherly instinct at the idea that you are going to leave others behind and it will feel as though you're leaving puppies in a cardboard box in the middle of the road. And that felt like a real catch-22. <laughs> yeah. so, so what they're saying is that, in, in, I've heard people, I heard in the panel this morning, I heard people talking about the, 
the elements that, um, that we attach ourselves to in these lower fear frequencies. What happens if there's floods in Florida? What happens if the financial houses collapse? What happens if, what happens if? And their answer to that is, rather than tell you that you need to go and stock up on food or water and store it in your cellar, rather than tell you to go out and buy a shovel and a, and a, and a, and a, and a bucket, we say to you, raise your vibrational frequency because when you have done that, you will be out and off the timelines where these things can occur. You will not experience this. This will not be your reality. It may be happening to others, but like, like, like what's going on in Russia is happening in Russia, like what's going on in Africa is happening in Africa. And if you were on the news and you allow yourself to get a little bit worked up and a little bit upset, and they say, what are you doing? How is this affecting you? You say, well, it's not affecting me. No, because that's not your reality. It's their reality, and this is what they contracted for, and they are fulfilling their contracts and having these experiences. But they did not sign up for the shift. They didn't want to. Either they've experienced the shift somewhere else on another planet, or they're not just not ready to do it yet. They'll do it later on. But they are not contracted for this shift. But you as light workers are not only contracted for the shift, you came in to help out at this time to make sure that those people who contracted make it. And this is where we are with Marconics. They handed this down in uh, March of last year. Um, because they said that we were ready for a human upgrade and that although light workers around the globe were, make, were doing a great job at raising vibrational frequency, that frequency cannot be sustained for a shift without being plugged in to the new crystalline grid, the new electromagnetic field around the earth. You as soon as you step out into your everyday lives, with your families, with your jobs, you're going to power down to level off at your natural vibrational frequency, which may incrementally be a little bit higher and a little bit higher. But what we're trying to do here is we're trying to shift into other dimensions. We're trying to ascend through fourth into fifth dimension, which previously we had to die to do. We're aiming to do this with our bodies. And the only way that this has happened before is when our spiritual leaders have perfected themselves in this plane, and they have managed to make that transition with their bodies. But to do that, they cleared 100% of their karma. And we haven't done that, and we don't have the time to be able to do that. So what they have said is, clear 51% of your karma, and you can make this shift. This Marconics that they handed down to us, which is called Marconics because it is, apparently it was uh, pioneered by Marconi, both when he was here and from the other side. Marconi understood about radio waves and the infrared system in space and how that could be harnessed. And um, what they've given us this for is um, to be able to help you reconnect into the grid, which is how the early Egyptians used to be, so that you can help draw down higher dimensional, higher light frequencies and have it come through you rather like the trunk <coughs> of the tree and down through into the electromagnetic grids underneath the, uh, the Earth's mantle um, and become what they call an, a negative ionic generator which will eventually create a map work over the surface of the planet which will help her clear pockets of negative energy so she can make that shift. Um, the other thing that's taking place is they have taught us that you have, that everybody had, placed over their chakras, it's a gelatinous um, sus substance, which when warm is, 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 is sort of viscous, but um, it, it gets like gelatine when it solidifies, placed over the chakras, deliberately intended to dumb us down, to break our connection with all that is, because that's what we wanted for this experience. But that's what's creating the density that's keeping us in the third dimension and stopping us flying off when things get difficult. Now we want to start flying off. These have got to be removed. And they showed us a three-part system whereby this occurs. That allows for all the karmic debris that's built up in your chakra system through past lives and through this lifetime to ooze out, essentially. And they, they say it liberates the being from its karmic, karmic creations and enables him to start going to light. This was not possible before the end of 2012. Beings were not ready. I don't know whether anybody's read, 
um, ET 101 that was written in the 70s. It, everybody thought it was a spoof, kind of tongue-in-cheek, funny little account. But in there, it refers to us as crispy critters, which is kind of what happens if we can't prepare ourselves and our bodies to be able to function in the high vibrational frequencies of the fifth, sixth, and seventh dimensions. Our biological vehicles aren't, aren't able to do that at this point. We're moving closer to it, but in the event that um, that things are um, are cataclysmic or that they have to move quickly, um, we have to be able to survive in, in, in a sudden shift into higher dimensions. Does anybody have any questions? Demonstration. Everybody responds like I do. No, I, I am. My mother says you must be so embarrassed. Watch your pony. Right. <laughs> That's why she chose me. <laughs> so, um, Catherine is um, Catherine is a yoga instructor, and she and she has been a very lively performer in her life. She's one of these people who, you know, dance naked in the woods and stuff like that. She just is a lively, and she responds to energy in a in a very physical way. She responds to energy in a very physical way, and the reason we use her is not to try and make you think everybody moves like this, because everybody doesn't. It can be maybe one in six people that will have this kind of reaction. Um, it's to show you, because she has her eyes closed, and when I'm quiet and you see where my hands are, you'll see her body respond and move, and you'll be able to see the energy demonstrated. body, you have 
meridian lines. Had acupuncture, you know that, the Kari Prana and Chi. What we're dealing with here is the fifth dimensional body template. We're dealing with the multi-dimensional layers of the holographic body, which is why when I beam from under the table, she still moves. And what the energy is doing is it's stimulating the axiotonal system, which runs like viridians in the fifth dimensional body template. The, merid the axiotonals extend beyond the physical body and out into the, into the universe around you, into the unified field. Scientists refer to them as Pirataki strings. What I'm doing here is I'm touching the strings. She's dancing like a puppet, <laughs> which is my favorite thing to do. <laughs> Thank you. 
Fantastic. We, 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 we teach people in uh, how to be practitioners of this in the no touch system. But what's fabulous is it's so brilliant in terms of um, distance healing being used for distance healing because of the fact that it's addressing the multi dimensional hologram. There is no space, there is no distance. Um, and that was a fabulous demonstration. That wasn't planned, but it was a fabulous proverb about getting into the fast moving stream yeah pushing yourself pushing yourself away from the bank and trusting that the fast water knows where it's taking you keep your head above the water look around you see who's with you and celebrate but if you're going to be the sort of person who's going to be clinging to the river bank for your to, to be saved then you will be dashed on the rocks so it's a case of um, of getting into alignment with your your own truth about what it is that you want, what it is that you want to be, who you want to be, not who your mother wants you to be, or your husband wants you to be, or your children want you to be even, but what is perfectly right and true for you. And when you do that, you are fully supported by the universe, by them, fully supported. And it's amazing how everyone around you falls into place. When you create that detachment from outcome, when you release judgment and you release um, expectations, it's, it means people can't get you anymore. They can't hook into your chakras and get you where it hurts anymore. There's nothing, they can't reach you. And when they can't reach you, they have to find another way. And it's amazing how people fall in. And you suddenly find, why did I do this years ago? You know? What's okay. okay. www.arconicreconnection.com I know, but he tried. <laughs> Mark, one of numbers the decorator didn't apparently was a little controversy. But we're way over at the other end. And come 
see us. We'd love to play with this with you when you experience the energy, okay? Because it's us, it's on us. And we have practitioner classes in Sarasota and Gainesville in April. April 4th through 6th and then the following. Or you can have your narcotic reconnection and be reconnected to the grid. We won't power down like you do on the Reiki sessions or anything like that once you're connected. Did I say it? Yeah, thank you.